Hello, I'm Annabelle Hopkins from Brown County, Indiana. Brown County is a tourist town full of artists, literally hundreds of artists who live among the hills and the forests of our beautiful area. It's in South Central Indiana, and you can find out all about it at browncounty.com, which uh, website will be on your screen, and there you can find out everything that's going on in our area. Today I'm here to talk about barn quilts. We are filming this mainly as a project for the junior and senior high schools of Brown County who are going to be doing a barn quilt painting project, but we hope to make this video available to anyone who wants to learn how to do barn quilts. We'll start at the very beginning and take it through to about the intermediate level once you have mastered those levels. You can go on and get as uh, detailed and complicated as you wish. Let me show you first of all what a barn quilt is. It is a quilt pattern that is painted on wood. This is a typical barn quilt. The wood that I use is called MDO board. It's uh, officially sign board, and this is a two-sided sign board. This is a one half inch thickness, and uh, they come in four by eight sheets, and I have the local lumber company cut them for me and make them into either a one by one or a two by two size. I haven't gone larger yet, but barn quilts can be as large as eight by eight for a huge building to go on. Barn quilts come from the idea of original fabric quilts. Uh, you've probably seen a quilt in your house or in your grandmother's house. Uh, they were, they've been around for centuries, but the traditional patterns were mostly brought here, we think, by uh, European immigrants. This is what we call a block, this section here. Quilts were normally made in square blocks, and then they were sewn together onto a backing and then with a filler in between and a layer on the back and used mainly in the beginning for uh, beds as blankets. And they were often made from scraps of material, uh, some, some they call crazy quilts that have all kinds of different things, not necessarily patterns. But this is the more typical quilt. I do collect antique and vintage quilts. I have for many, many years. I don't sew, I can't sew, I hate sewing, and so I really appreciate what those women did, how long it took them, how detailed it was. Uh, my grandmother was in a uh, circle, they called a circle at her church back in the 1930s, and the women would get together and make quilts together. It was a social activity as well. This is one of my favorite quilts. This is a child bed size quilt. And this is one of the more typical patterns, which is called a log cabin. As you can see, these pieces here represent logs. The center is the hearth or the heart of the home. And so each one of these is a typical square. And so a barn quilt is made from taking one of these squares and enlarging it to whatever size you want in your quilt. They go far beyond just traditional patterns. They you can be as creative as you want. Many people put pictures in between. They make signs out of them. I'm, on the screen, I'm going to show a few examples. The first one is a barn quilt this size that I have attached underneath my mailbox. And that's a very common way of using them. You could put house numbers on it if you want or just make it a pattern. The second one is a barn quilt, which is a, this size, two by two, and that's attached on my porch. That is a Mariner's Compass design, as is the first one. The third one is here locally on the Bond Farm on Upper Schooner Road. It's a two by two uh, Le Moyne Star barn quilt. The next one is on an outbuilding at the same farm. It's just very pretty. It uh, really adds a lot to the building, just makes it come alive. The last one is a barn quilt design that I made into a sign for my art studio. So I did the background as the quilt, and then I painted the fleur-de-lis in the middle freehand, and then I used a stencil for the letters. And those are just a few examples of what you can do with barn quilts. I've seen them as tabletops. Some people just hang them indoors as like paintings, as art pieces. So there's, they're very versatile. The ones that are made in our project by the students, some will stay in the school, some may go home with students. Most of them, we hope, will be around town, around the county, on buildings, uh, barns. Merchants have asked for them on their buildings. So we hope that we'll have lots of barn quilts out and around in our county. The reason I got into this project is that I am a member of the local Arts and Entertainment Commission. Uh, we're all volunteers, and we try to promote the arts and support the arts in Brown County <coughs> in Nashville. A uh, person from the Visitors Bureau came to us 
looking to start a barn quilt trail. That project never got off the ground, but it sparked an idea. Say, so, why can't we do that? Let's make some barn quilts and put them around town. So we held a workshop for the public a couple of years ago, and then the idea came out to do it in the schools. So we got a grant from the state to pay for the materials and supplies, and so we hoped to do it. We were gonna do it earlier, but of course COVID came along, and so that's why we're videotaping these lessons so they can be used by the schools whenever the students are able to come back and work together. I hope that you will um, get something out of this program. Uh, I wanted to show you just a few of the things we'll be doing in the program. We're gonna do this design here, which is fairly easy. It's called the Ohio Star. We're going to be doing eight point stars, which this is a basic eight point star. It can be made into all kinds of different designs depending on how detailed you wanna go. There's another eight point star. This is a Mariner's compass. Um, the, one, uh, the ones I have on my home and mailbox are forms of the Mariner's Compass. This is a very, very popular design. This one is a Black-Eyed Susan. This is one we won't be doing, but this is an example of a more complicated quilt. This one took forever because of all the different little parts of it. And each, the more parts you have, the more sections, the longer it takes because of the taping and the painting, etc. The more colors you have, the more complicated it is. So that's how we're gonna start out. I'm gonna start with uh, a basic design and we'll take it from there. And you can uh, jump ahead in the video. Uh, we'll show you the ones that we'll cover and then you can pick the one you want. Once you've learned the basics, you can go right to the design that you wanna do. And you can find designs everywhere. They're all over YouTube, they're all over Pinterest. Um, so there's no lack of designs. Once you know how to make a grid, and copy a design, uh, the rest is up to you and you can take it from there. On the screen are some of my paintings. I've been painting for about 20 years. I do several different styles, as you can see, abstract, uh, landscape impressionist, and uh, fluid acrylic pouring. I took up barn quilt painting about two years ago. I would like to thank Cameron Fox, who is a senior at Brown County High School, who videotaped, uh, edited, and produced this video has been very, very helpful and we hope that you will enjoy the different segments. Thank you.